How's it going, everyone? Just thought I'd do a little simple video of um, <laughs> hacking a uh, old MacBook power supply. Um, this is an old 60 watt MagSafe power supply that came from work. Um, the laptop had subsequently been thrown in the bin, and this was in the US, so I, I grabbed it. And um, I want to use it to power my um, stepper motor drivers for my plotter. Now, they're my old pick step. Um, stepper motor drivers that I designed yonks and yonks ago. They really want about 40 volts and um, three and a half amps, but I'm only using little NEMA 17s on the plotter, so it doesn't need that much current or voltage really. I mean, the voltage helps um, with speed in steppers, and these aren't going that fast, so I've been running it happily off 12 to 14 volts just fine. Um, so, anyway, so this power supply outputs uh, about 17 volts at three and a half amps. Um, which is almost perfect. It's a bit more than 12, so I get a little bit more speed out of the motors if I want. And the three and a half amps is more than enough for the five or six hundred milliamps each motor, the four motors draw. But um, an Apple power supply is a smart power supply. It um, has a whole bunch of detect uh, safety features and detection and bits and pieces, and it isn't just a DC output power supply. Um, there isn't any more connectivity. Um, the MagSafe actually looks like it has a lot more pins on it and that's just basically to control the little LED in the end of the socket but actually it's just a two wire cable um, all of the signaling back to the power supply is done via resistant loads um, so I'll just show you how this works so at the moment the power supply is off as there's no voltage I have a, a 66 ohm um, load here um, which gives it about uh, 4 watts 4 watts a load this is a 60 watt power supply so that's nothing um, I've got a little DC isolation switch here to disconnect disconnect the load. Um, I'll show you what that's for. Effectively, that's just what's connecting the um, the load to the power supply. So the power supply, as you can see here, it's kind of a bit dodgy, but you'll see what, I'm, what it does in a minute. Basically, the power supply won't turn on unless there's a 40 kilo ohm um, resistance across its terminals. And so what the voltmeter is currently measuring is the voltage across the terminals. So I've currently got that sort of hardwired. I, of course I'll use a proper 40k resistor. I just grabbed resistors in my junk bin back there to make up the 40k or thereabouts. It's about 44 I think. So the power supply is off. I'll turn it on and you'll see what happens. Uh, let's just flick the switch and it puts about 1.5 volts in and then it goes, oh there's a actual thing I should be loading here and then it will supply the power. Now there's 17 volts across those terminals which is just fine. And my little load switch here is off and if I flick it on you see it lights up and now this load is loaded and as you can see if I turn it off the voltage skips a little bit because the load's gone and if I turn it back on it stabilizes so yeah so now for my stepper controller I just put this switch on the front of the box and it's actually quite a handy um, isolation now watch what happens if I turn it off All right. And I leave the load switch turned on. So that's actually the discharge of the capacitor in it. So now it's discharged. There's zero volts. So if I turn this back on, it, it won't enable. It'll go 0 0.4, 0 0.004, and it'll just sit there. Nothing happens because as far as it's concerned, it didn't see the conditions it needs and it thinks it's a short or it hasn't, hasn't safely been connected. So now if I turn this off, it'll get 1.5. It'll see the 40K, and now it's powered. So, I mean, as a safety feature, that's kind of neat because I could leave that switch on, turn the power supply off, right, and this is still on, but now turn the power supply on, it won't turn on until I actually turn it off. And now it's, now it's right to go. Now I'll just do that one more time. I'll turn it off, and this time leave the, I'll leave the load off this time, so we'll see it initialize. Actually, I'll turn it on just to discharge it. There we go. Turn it back off. I'll turn the power supply back on, and it'll do the little 1.5 volt. Now it's in supplying mode. The switch is off. I can turn it on. So while it's annoying, and I've had to add a bit of extra bits and pieces, it's not really that bad, and it actually is a kind of nice safety feature, because if you leave this switched on, and it gets depowered, let's say there's a power interruption or a, you know some sort of power fault, um, and the power instantly comes back, the machine doesn't instantly turn itself back on and possibly damage things or cause issues. It actually has to be turned back off to reset it to be turned back on. I, while it was annoying, 
I actually think that's a pretty good feature. So anyway, so that's the power supply. It's going to get put in this old ATX, micro ATX computer that I've subsequently gutted. Um, it's an old ugly thing. Um, I can't remember what I had this for. Um, so yeah, so my four pick step controllers, uh, just an Arduino running Gerbil, I believe it is, um, and that's where the power supply will fit. Now I'm going to have to drill a hole in the front to put that switch, which isn't a big deal, uh, and I'm going to make a fiberglass back plate such that all the all the sockets come out for the steppers. Um, and yeah, so just a little quick one. I thought I'd I'd show some of the you know the nice little side effect of having a a smarter than normal power supply. I mean, 60 watts is more than enough for what I need here. So I'm all in all pretty pleased. Anyway, um, it's stinking hot here, and um, I'm going to stop right here. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.